Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet a seashell coin purse. So this is a pretty small project. Here are the supplies you're going to need. I've got a size D or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I have a 7 inch zipper. This is a vintage one. But um, whatever kind of zipper you like, not an invisible zipper, just a regular like a number three um, nylon zipper will work fine, but it just needs to be um, about seven inches long. And you're going to need a small amount of yarn. Um, this is DK weight yarn. This is a Sun TQ um, yarn bonbon that I got on Amazon. You can see the link to my review in the description box. But this skein has about 50 yards in it. So you're gonna need some yarn um, of your choice. I've got like a sand color. Here is a blunt tapestry needle. I got one with a bent tip, but that's optional. You're going to need a sharp, large eye sewing needle, preferably one that you can manage to get your yarn through the eye of the needle. Um, if you have a hard time, you can use an extra piece of thread as a needle threader to get the yarn to go through the eye of that needle, but you just need a larger eye yarn needle with a sharp point. It's not gonna work if you use a yarn needle with a blunt tip like this one because we're going to be using it to stitch through the zipper fabric, the zipper tape, and we cannot do that with a blunt tip, so you need a sharp point here with a large eye. You're gonna need some scissors. You'll also need a ruler to measure your gauge. So we're gonna start by crocheting our seashells. You can get the written pattern for this project on my blog at yayforyarn.com or you can just check the link in the description box to get the written pattern. Uh, we're gonna need to be making two seashells to make this project. And even though the pattern might seem a little complicated because it shows instructions for every single row, a lot of those rows are repeats of previous rows, but I list, you know, give the instructions again every time you do that row because every time you do it, you're going to be joining that row to another spot. So it's basically the same few rows, but each time you work those few rows again, you're joining them to a different spot. So it's not as complicated as it looks. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is chain four like so, and we're gonna slip stitch in this first chain stitch to make a little ring, like that. You can't really see the center of it, but if you insert your hook into it, you can find it pretty easily. So what we're gonna do first is chain three, and then we're going to work six double crochet into the center of that ring. So I'm just inserting it into the middle of that little circle of chain stitches that we just made. So that is our first row. We have three chains right here, which counts as one stitch. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six double crochet. And this is going to make a little half circle shape that we're gonna be using to join our seashell into. So we're gonna turn. And what we're gonna do is, as you can see this first stitch right here, we're gonna slip stitch into that. And we're gonna slip stitch into the second one. And now we're gonna start working the fan-shaped part of our seashell. We're gonna chain 16. And then we're gonna skip the first three chains and double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So here's one, two, three. I'm gonna double crochet into that one, the fourth one from the hook. Then I'm gonna double crochet in the next three stitches. I'm going to half double crochet in the next four stitches. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next five. Okay. 
All right, there we go. So that is the first row of our fan shape. But the last step for this row is to join this row to our half circle with the slip stitch. So we're going to slip stitch into the same double crochet from this half circle that our chain came out of. So as you can see, we have a total of, if you include that beginning chain space in the, the half circle, we've got seven double crochet equivalent total. So not this first one that we slip stitch past, it's the second one in from my right hand side. If you're a lefty and you crochet left handed, then it's going to be the second stitch in from the left hand side. So it's basically just the same stitch that our chain came out of when we began that first part of the fan. So we're slip stitching into that space. Now we're going to turn. We're going to slip stitch into the first stitch, the second stitch, then we're going to single crochet in the next two, and then we're going to half double crochet into the next nine. And then we're also going to half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain space from the previous row. It was the top of those three chains that we skipped at the beginning of the last row. So now we're going to turn again and we're going to chain two. I'm not going to work into that stitch that the chains are coming out of, but I'm going to go into the next stitch and work a double crochet. And then I'm also going to double crochet into the next three for a total of four. So I've got my chain two, four double crochets, and then I'm going to work half double crochet in the next four. Then we're going to single crochet in the next five. And when we get to those last two, those were um, slip stitches in the row below. So just be careful that you're inserting it into the right um, loops of yarn. If you accidentally insert into the wrong ones, it's okay. As long as you have two um, slip stitches that you're working into. And then we're going to slip stitch to join to the half circle in the same stitch that we joined our um, row two in, which was where we came out here with our fan. So we're just going to slip stitch into that same space again, which is again, the second double crochet in from the right. If you're a lefty, it'll be the second one in from the left. So that is our first um, section of our fan shape for our seashell. But we have to do one more step here to make this have, you know, some ridges in it to make it look like a seashell. So to do that, we're gonna do something a little bit different than normal. We're going to slip stitch across the row that we just did and then start from the side again to work the next row of our seashell. But here's the thing, if we turn and we slip stitch from this direction, we're not going to get the ridges that we're going for because the ridges that we want are kind of um, indent, indented lines and it's just not going to look right if we just turn and slip stitch across. So what we're going to do is something that might sound a little complicated, but it's really not that hard at all. We're going to do a backwards slip stitch. So we're going to be slip stitching the opposite direction that we would normally crochet. If you're right handed like me, you're going to be slip stitching um, instead of your normal right to left, you're going to be slip stitching from left to right. If you're lefty, you're going to normally be crocheting from left to right. So you're going to be your, doing your backwards slip stitch from right to left. So this is pretty simple. You can either turn it upside down and insert into those stitches from the upside down direction, or you can do what I like to do and just take your hook and insert it into the next stitch in the wrong direction, yarn over and pull through all your loops, and just keep inserting into the next stitch in your opposite direction of normal. So again, if you're a lefty, you're going to be the going the other way from what I am. But if you're right handed, you're going to be going from left to right. 
and we're slip stitching in a total of 13 stitches. So we're slip stitching in all the stitches except for this chain two space at um, the beginning of the row that we had just done. So that's our fourth row. Now that is kind of the foundation for the next part of our fan. This row of slip stitches is what we're going to be working into. So we have our slip stitches running across the front and our regular stitch running across the top. We're going to ignore what's running across the top and we're only going to work into the slip stitches that we just did. So now we're going to chain three and we're going to be working into these slip stitches. We're going to double crochet in that first slip stitch and in the next three slip stitches and these are just a little bit harder to insert into but as long as you did not work them too tightly then you shouldn't have to force it. So that was we want to we did a double crochet in the first slip stitch and in the next three. So now we're going to half double crochet in the next four. Again, working into those slip stitches. So that's our fourth half double crochet. Now we're going to single crochet in the next five. Like so. So now as you can see, we can begin to see the nice um, indentation that working into that row of backward slip stitching created there. So now to finish off this row, we're going to slip stitch it to our half circle down here, but instead of working into the same stitch that we worked all the other slip stitches into, that we joined those other rows from the first section into, this is our second section. So we're going to be moving into this third double crochet in the half circle from the side. And we're going to slip stitch there. So again, we're going to turn we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch and the second stitch. We're going to single crochet in the next two. And then we're going to half double crochet in the next nine. And half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain space from the row below. We're going to turn again and we're going to chain two. We're going to double crochet in the next four stitches. We're not working into that same stitch that the chains are coming out of, but the next four. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next four. And we're going to single crochet in the next five. And remember, those last two are going to be worked into slip stitches. So just pay attention to where you're inserting your hook. And then we're going to slip stitch again to join into that same um, stitch that we joined our, not the last row, but the last before into. So it's that third double crochet in from the side. Now we're not going to turn. We're going to again work that row of backwards slip stitching into the next 13 going the opposite direction from normal. And that is the end of our second section of our, our seashell. So now we're going to do the third section. We're again going to chain three, double crochet into that same slip stitch that the chain is coming out of, the very first one. And then we're going to double crochet into the next three slip stitches. Then we're going to half double crochet into the next four. So, and single crochet into the next five. All right, and now we're going to slip stitch into the next double crochet of our half circle. So here's the first one, second, third, we're going into the fourth one now to slip stitch our end of row to that half circle. We're going to turn, we're going to slip stitch into the first two stitches single crochet into the next two, half double crochet into the next nine, and half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain 
space from the row below. We're going to turn and chain two. We're going to double crochet into the next four stitches. Half double crochet into the next four. And single crochet in the next five. And again, we're going to slip stitch into that same center double crochet or the fourth one in from the side. And then we're going to work our row of backwards slip stitching and backwards slip stitch into the next 13. Going in the opposite direction from normal. All right, there's the end of our third section of our seashell. You can see how this is taking shape. Now we're going to work the fourth. We're going to chain three, double crochet into the next four slip stitches. As you can see, this is rather repetitive. The only part that changes between the sections is where we join it to the half circle. So we've done four double crochet. We're going to do half double crochet in the next four and single crochet in the next five. And we're going to slip stitch into the next double crochet of our half circle. So here's one, two, three, four. We're going to go into the fifth and slip stitch right there. Now we're going to turn, slip stitch into the first two stitches, single crochet into the next two, and then half double crochet in the next nine. and half double crochet in the top of that beginning chain space. We're gonna turn and chain two, double crochet into the next four, half double crochet into the next four, and then we're gonna single crochet in the next five. And then we're again going to slip stitch into that same fifth the double crochet of the half circle. And we're going to do our backwards slip stitching back across that row in all 13 of those um, stitches that are visible. We're not slip stitching into that chain two space from the row below. So just the 13 regular stitches across. There we go. We got one more section left. We're gonna chain three double crochet into the first slip stitch and into the next three for a total of four. Then we're going to half double crochet into the next four. Then we're going to single crochet in the next five. There we go. Now we're going to slip stitch to join that into the sixth double crochet of our half circle down here. Now we're going to turn, again slip stitch into the first two, single crochet into the next two, half double crochet into the next nine, and half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain space. So again we're going to turn and chain two, double crochet into the next four, half double crochet into the next four, and single crochet into the next five. There we go, now we're gonna slip stitch down here again into that same spot, that sixth double crochet. And that is what our seashell looks like at this point. But we need to make this bottom part a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna slip stitch up the next three stitches. So I've done three slip stitches there. And in this last, um, it's not really a double crochet, but it was the chain three space from our, our half circle. I'm going to work several double crochets. So here's one, two double crochets. Then I'm going to turn and kind of work two single crochets into the side, or the corner I should say, of that double crochet. So I just went through the double crochet I just made, 
and I'm going to single crochet evenly across the bottom straight edge of this half circle and you just want to keep them evenly spaced until you get to this corner so to speak of that double crochet which is that one that's on the very edge we're going to work two single crochets into it and then we're going to kind of chain two we're going to insert our hook into the first chain that we did yarn over pull up a loop insert into the same stitch which is that extra double crochet that was on the edge yarn over pull up a loop and yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two as though that were a double crochet then I'm going to work a second double crochet like so and then I'm going to come up here and slip stitch that to the third chain that's up here on the side of our seashell that first um, row of chains that we did so there is our finished seashell I'm just going to stretch the loop on that and move the little tail out of the way so you can see its shape and it's very um, neatly seashell shaped. We're going to make a second one of these and then I'm going to show you how to assemble them together. So go ahead and tie this one off, leaving a reasonably long tail for assembling. So here we have our pouch or coin purse ready to be assembled. I've got two of the seashells, my zipper, my sharp um, large eye sewing needle. I've got a yarn needle for weaving in the ends. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sandwich these two together and we're going to insert the zipper across this top scalloped edge up here. So I'm going to take my one of these um, long tails from my seashell and thread it into the yarn needle. And I'm going to sandwich these seashells together like that so that the right sides are both facing out. And I'm going to begin whip stitching this side edge together. So I'm taking these two edges right here along the side of the seashell and I'm going to whip stitch them together and I'm going to stop when I get just about to the almost the corner or the where it begins to curve. All right, so there's my last whip stitch right there. And so our, our queen purse is kind of joined together at the side. The little uh, bottom here is still open, but we'll fix that when we get there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start inserting the zipper at this point. So we're going to take our yarn that we've got right here. We're going to take another stitch to tie a knot just to secure that seam. And then we're going to take the yarn out of the yarn needle and put it into the sewing needle and if you give this a really tight twist it's a little bit easier to kind of wiggle it through the needle and what we're going to do is we're going to start attaching the zipper now the first thing we need to do when we attach our zipper is we're going to have to block the end of the zipper tape so that the zipper pull can't go past this point so I'm going to make sure that wherever I'm holding it, I've still got enough length of zipper to go across the top plus a little extra. So I'm going to hold it right about here. I'm lining up the center of the zipper tape with the seam I just did. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches with my sharp eyed sewing needle. I'm not going through the crochet, just through the zipper right now. And we're just kind of stitching across the um, metal or plastic teeth of the zipper to keep the zipper pull from passing that spot. So now that that's secure, I'm just going to tuck or I guess tug on the bottom end of the zipper down here to slide that point down to meet the edge of the seam so that it's not like visible and sticking up higher up and now we're going to start stitching our um, crochet part 
to the zipper. So I'm going to take a stitch going straight down through the crochet and the zipper tape. And what we want to do is gradually taper out. I'm only going to go on the one side here. I'm going to ignore this side for right now. We want to kind of taper out so that the crochet is not right up against the edge of the zipper teeth because we don't want it to get snagged in the zipper. So I'm going to slowly kind of bring my stitching further away from the zipper tape so that it's not right up against. But we, we want to kind of bend the zipper to go around the shape of our seashell without, um, you know, we don't want to take the uh, curved parts, the little indents of the scallops, and pull them up straight. We want to leave them scallops. So I'm going to start lining up this um, valley of the scallop close to the edge of the zipper tape, but not quite on the edge. And I'm just going to be stitching through the zipper tape and through my crochet along that edge in kind of a running stitch, just an up and down stitch. And as I get to that valley part of the scallop, I want to make sure that it is going through the zipper tape and not, you know, hanging off the edge, but I also don't want it directly on the edge. So it's close to the edge of that zipper tape, but it's got enough space that you can still stitch it to the zipper tape. So now I'm going to go up the next scallop, again bending the zipper around the shape that we're making without getting the crochet too close to the zipper teeth. And you also don't want to stretch your crochet like that because um, this is not flat. It's kind of bubbles with each section of the shell. So we want to kind of let it continue to do that. And then we're just going to keep going across until we get down to this point over here. So here we are almost at the corner of our shell. We want to again bring it um, close to, remember how we brought it close to the zipper teeth so that we could make that little um, bar tack across the teeth so that it wouldn't um, pass the zipper. But before we do that, we always have to pull the zipper pull past um, the point where we're tacking it because if we were to keep it zipped like that and then stitch across it, then the zipper would stop right there and it would be totally useless. So we need to pull it past the point where we want to tack it shut. I want to make sure that I'm basically as far to that corner as I can get. So there's my corner. Now I can kind of push those zipper teeth together. I'm going to bring my needle up at the edge of the zipper tape, or the zipper teeth I should say. I want to push the zipper tape together so that the stop up here, this metal thing, is lined up. And then we can kind of stitch across both halves of the zipper tape to do our little bar tack, as we would call it in um, regular sewing, to close off the end of the zipper so that the zipper pull can't pass that spot. And I'm going to take my needle out of that yarn for the moment. We're going to come back to it later. So now that that end of the zipper is tacked closed, I'm going to take some scissors, not my little um, yarn snip scissors, but some slightly larger scissors and trim off the extra zipper tape. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the one on the other side as well. We just want to get rid of all that extra length so that it's not bulking up inside of our pouch. So now we're going to take the other long tail that we left. The bottom of the bag is still going to be open. We're going to sew that up later. But we're going to use this other long tail to do the other side of the zipper and this side seam. So first I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to again match these edges right here, these two side edges, and stitch them together with a whip stitch. So I just want to make sure that I'm not catching my other tail that I left over here in my seam, in my whip stitch seam, because we're going to deal with this later. So I'm going to take, say, one more stitch, 
to, to whip stitch those two sides together. And then we're going to kind of tuck the end of that zipper and the bar tacked section down into the side seam. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take that same stitch again in the same place, pull on the yarn a little bit and tie a knot. So I'm going to remove the yarn needle from that strand of yarn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shorter tail that was left from where we bar tacked the second end of our zipper. I'm going to put it onto my sewing needle. Just make sure you tightly twist the end of the yarn to get it through the eye. And what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this down again, tuck it in there, and I'm going to actually turn it inside out so that I can kind of tack down the end of the zipper without it being, you know, so it won't be scratchy on the inside or um, flapping around and getting in the way. So I want to line it up just the way I had it when it was right side out. I want to make sure the zipper tape is centered on that whip stitch seam. And then I'm going to begin stitching the zipper. So what I'm going to do is bring my needle down from where it is and then bring it back up a little further over and go up through my zipper tape. I'm going to take a little running stitch right there. So holding this in place, I'm just going to kind of whip stitch over the end of the zipper to not only hold it down, but to help keep it from fraying. Um, you can also use, if you like, there's a product called Fray Check that is kind of like a liquid that you apply to cut edges of things and it can help keep the edge from fraying. So I'm going to just kind of tack this down all the way across and that will help keep that zipper tape in its place. So I'm just going to find a little place to tie off right about there. I'm going to wrap the yarn around to make a knot and then I will weave in this tail. All right, so now that this end of the zipper is tacked down, I'm going to turn it back the right side out and then I'm going to pick up this long tail again that we had held from our side seam and put it back onto the sewing needle. And now we're going to do kind of the same thing we did on the other side when we stitched down the crocheted part to the zipper tape. And when we do this, we want to open the zipper so that we can get our hands in there and actually be able to hold it together. And again, we want to keep the um, valley part of the scallop close to the edge of the zipper tape so that the taller part of the scallop is not uh, getting in the way of the zipper teeth. So I'm just going to stitch this to the zipper tape all the way across just as we did before. So as you get close to the end, you just want to kind of hold it together with your fingers and make sure that you are lining up um, the zipper tape with the crochet so that there aren't any big bubbles in it and so that it lays flat. And again, as we get down close to the end of our zipper, we need to kind of bring the crochet part a little closer to the teeth so that um, it's going to meet together correctly. It's already sewn here at the side, so we just want to make sure that it kind of mirrors the other side. So there is our final stitch across the top. As you can see, our um, shell sections, each of these five sections, lines up on both sides. They're kind of, you know, stacked on top of each other. And you just want to give your um, seam a tug to make sure that you didn't pull too tight on the string and um, lose kind of lose the shape of your seashell. So I'm going to turn it inside out again, not all the way, but just enough that I can get to the inside. And we're going to do the same thing with the zipper tape. Um, tack it down so that it is not in the way. And I'm just going to come up around the other side just a little bit 
to tack down this side of the zipper tape because we did not um, tack it down when we were assembling the first side. So um, see this side is tacked and this side is not. So we're gonna go ahead and tack the, both edges of that tape. Then I'm going to bring my needle down into the yarn part. Take a little stitch and make a knot. And then I'm going to weave this in part way and we're gonna use the rest of this strand of tail yarn to sew up the bottom of our, our little pouch. So if you want to, I can, I'm just going to work my way down through the fabric to the point where we um, originally started our side seams. Then I'm gonna turn it back right side out, bring my needle to the outside, and I'm gonna switch back to the yarn needle now because we don't have to stitch anything else through the zipper tape. And I'm just going to take these edges across the bottom and whip stitch them together. And you wanna make sure that when you do this, you line up the corners so here's the corner on this side and the corner on this side. We want to make sure we stitch through both of those at the same time so that they will be um, lined up correctly. So here's the other corner. I'm going to stitch through both corners so that they line up. And finish up this last little portion of our seam. Then we're going to, as usual, take a little stitch, make a knot, and then I'm just gonna weave in this tail. So here is our finished seashell shaped coin purse. We can just zip it closed across the top like that. And this is pretty small. It's about three inches high by four inches wide. And this is a perfect size to throw um, a chapstick, a few coins in there, whatever you need into your bag, especially a beach bag, because you know beach bags have holes in them sometimes. And this is a little, a great little compartment to keep small things that might fall out of a beach bag. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.